you guys on in concert, God, years ago. I want to say it was in like 2013. You guys, I think you were on tour with Otep, I think. Yeah, years upon years it. ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otep, Stolen Babies, and then New Year's Day before yes. they had gotten real big too. Yes. So yeah, I, I, it's good to actually sit down and talk to you all these years later. But you guys just earlier this week recently released the video and the single for Sheep, and I had a chance to check it out, man, and it is. Talk about a good way to get a kick-ass song, dude. <laughs> the song. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Absolutely. We're super, super stoked on it, actually. Awesome. We did it with uh, Andrew Wade and Andy uh, Karpovic up at like uh, the audio compound. Nice. And we had, yeah, we had never recorded with them before, so it's like a little bit of a, a different take, you know, mm-hmm. from a new producer, I guess. When you work with a new producer and stuff, I mean, what are some what what is that process like that some people don't necessarily think of? Because a producer can kind of make or break how the song turns out, and it doesn't always turn out the way you might want it to when you envision what the song sounds like. So, I mean, working with a new producer, producer, were there any reservations or anything like that that you weren't one hundred percent sure how this was going to go? That you but pleasantly surprised, or what was that process like? Um, it was definitely different because the last guy we recorded with, we kind of would just write everything and then record it. And then we started looking deeper into like what, like some of the other bands that were getting more success were doing and they were recording, you know, tons of songs. Mm -hmm. And then basically, um, like throwing away certain songs so we were like okay we're gonna just try to have a bunch when we go up to the studio Mm -hmm. because we found andrew wade and he's done like uh a pillow and like a day to remember i think and stuff like that so we were like okay maybe this guy will right you know put a little spark on what we do Mm -hmm. um and we ended up doing uh that song a lot of it with andy uh karpovic um, and he's like basically works with Andrew hand in hand, but, uh, yeah, sheep, we kind of had already brung it to him and we're like expecting him to be like, okay, change this, change that, like do this, you mm-hmm. know, cause that's kind of what producers do. Yeah. And that song, they kind of left alone. Like nice. they were like, nah, yeah. They were like, we kind of <laughs> like what you did here. And then we gave him, you know, enough songs to pick from to where I think the ones that they didn't want to do. Mm-hmm they were like, okay, well, we could just, you know, we'll just not record these, but at least that way we didn't have to, like, restructure a bunch of music or anything like that, and we were like, you know what I mean? As a person, yeah. you, I don't know how other musicians feel, but I personally try to just do it all myself, mm-hmm. you know yeah. what I mean? And I don't, I, you know, I got the ego, I don't want to listen to anyone's opinion, but... uh when someone's got gold and platinum records, you're like, okay, I guess I should like listen to this dude's opinion right now. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So. I mean, especially with the bands he's worked with to get, to get those platinum records and stuff. I mean, yeah, he, he knows, but also as the artist, man, like you said, like I, I'm that way with, with stuff for myself, with stuff that I do. I, I don't necessarily want to hear, you know, people say you should do this, you should do this. Like, I have the vision. I know how I want it to turn out. I just maybe need help getting it to that point sometimes to make it, to get it done, and then just, like, leave it alone, do what I want it to make it sound the way I want it to sound, you know? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, and th- this year, you guys are just kind of releasing singles, it looks like. Um, just Yeah, we're that- going to do a single every eight weeks is our okay. game plan. We did 15 songs up there with Andrew and uh, Andy. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we've only released, uh, we did Ups and Downs yeah. back in February, and then we just did Sheep, and then we have, in like another eight to ten weeks, we're going to be dropping another one. We kind of haven't decided which one we're mm-hmm. going to do next, but we do have a bunch of songs. We brung mm-hmm. them like, uh, I want to say like 25 songs and we ended up recording like 15 of them. Gotcha. So, so yeah. coming out of coming, I guess coming out of COVID and whatnot, it's been, it's been a minute since you guys have really put out new Lydia can't breathe music. And with 2020 kind of being a wash for a lot of bands, and a lot of people just going the single route instead of a full album with all these songs kind of in the can. Is this more a way to consistently stay in front of people with new music more often instead of just releasing one batch at, 
at once and kind of give them the chance to spend, you know, spend their money on a single at a time instead of just like, you know, like an entire record. What was the thought process between doing just singles instead of a full length record all at once? Kind of like what you said, like, I mean, in a nutshell, and I feel like a lot of people in the industry are catching on and it's, uh, the guy that we work with that does like our internet, like, uh, marketing and managing, mm-hmm. um, he works with rappers and that's what they do. And he, right. like, you know, they're doing a lot like their industry there, um, is even though it's still music, their industry is higher up than the heavy rock. Mm-hmm. Like they're doing bigger numbers basically. Like, you know what I mean? Like number yeah. one selling artists, if you go on the top 100 of like all music, it's like, the top 40 is all like R&B and rap and stuff. So he was like, that's what these people are doing. And even though you guys don't play that genre, I feel like that's what you guys should do. And you need to start like pumping out more music to be able to compete. And people's attention spans Mm -hmm. are very minimal. So if you just give them all the CD at once, you know what I mean? They're going to listen to it for a couple of weeks and then they're just kind of be like, okay, I'm good. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, that and if they you release you know a single a uh, single to and then the record people are going to latch onto the single and then a lot of times they'll skip past other songs on the record to go to the one they already yeah, know and they already love and I find that like it's hard to digest every song and really appreciate every song and sometimes there's those little pieces of gold that are hidden inside that record that you don't always get if you don't have the song right in front of you right away so you know. It gives fans a chance to appreciate every song as well. Yeah, that's awesome, actually. I didn't, I didn't you know, think about it like that. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to listen to the dude. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <I> was like, <laughs> right. That sounds smart. Like, right. Know, right. And, like, when I get sent, like, records, like, a lot of times if I know I'm going to get sent an album to review, if that man is releasing singles ahead of time, sometimes, like, I try not to listen to the single ahead of time because I do that sometimes. I'm like, I'm going to go straight to that song. And, like, sometimes I'll miss a song. You know, so it it helps really appreciate, like, that's how I've, like, found some of my favorite songs is, like, just listen to the record all the way through or stuff like that. It really Find the diamond in the rough. Exactly. Now, the video for Sheep is really cool because the majority of the video is just you guys playing the song with some some really cool lights. But it also, there's those video clips telling that story with, like, the kids of the sheep mask and stuff like that. What story were you guys trying to tell? with the music video, if at all? I mean, basically, uh, the the song itself is about how society is trying to control us, you know, through social media and, like, Mm. TV and all that, and how it's easily, like, at a young age to train the kids to do a certain thing. And so the family, there's, like, a family in it that's, like, has the other little kids that are Mm -hmm. trying to acquire you know, more, more sheep to have on the clan or whatever, however you want to look at this. But that's kind of like the video has like the parents that are like trying, and then it has like another little kid trying to drag in, you know, the little kids that haven't been converted yet. And right. it's just like, but it's in a nutshell, I feel like society is like trying to control us through like social media and mm-hmm. ad space and like all the phones and all that stuff to where, like we we really think that like you should just think for yourself mm-hmm. and not worry about what everybody else is doing and just do what's right by you. You know what I mean? That's kind of the basis of the song and don't be like everybody else just because that's what everybody else is doing because you could just be conforming to the greater evil. Yeah, know? yeah, and it's tough because my daughter is nine and like she's always on like YouTube and stuff like that and. It's amazing, like, the types of stuff that are just in those videos, even for, like, younger kids and stuff. Like, seeing her, like, mold her personality to what she's seeing all over the place is just, like, it makes parenting freaking hard, man. Yeah, <laughs> they're smarter than what they than what we were when we were young. Too. I know, it really and is. They have, yeah, so much knowledge is given to them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so I, I guess, like, how did... Coming out of COVID, I guess I want to know, like, how did that, how did the the last year and couple months really affect Lydia Can't Breathe and you guys as artists? Did it? Did you guys look at 2020 as already being like a creative year and just writing before you went into the year? Did that force you guys to start writing and be more creative when it hit? 
No, it's kind of crazy because we weren't going to tour in 2020. We were just going to write as many songs as possible. And the plan Mm -hmm. that we're talking about was already developed. And then COVID just kind of gave us the free time to do it. And it made it to where I bet, like, we have 15 songs. We probably only have 10. And then we're actually recording another song right now. And we have, like, three or four more that we're pre-prone. And we all got, like... uh, recording equipment and stuff and started tracking at our houses and sending it to each, each other. And I feel like listening back on the music, cause we usually just would play it live a bunch and then mm-hmm. go record it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now that we were listening back, I feel like we're making some of those decisions that are better for the music. Um, mm-hmm. cause when you're playing and you're all hot and you're just like, you're into it like every you're just vibing like you're yep. like this shit's vibing like i'm vibing like <laughs> but when you go back and listen to it sometimes you're like yo man like you were not vibing right there. <laughs> like i don't know what is happening but like right you need to take that part out of the song or something <laughs> like yeah so oh, i feel like great. that yeah that helps us for <laughs> sure so what's the rest of 2021 look like i know we're it's hard to believe we're already almost like a quarter of the way through the year or almost to summer but yeah. what's the have you guys looked at what touring might look like for you this year or are you kind of still holding off and looking at 22 i think we're probably going to do a couple shows here and there um and then we might do like a couple weeks in the fall we have a couple shows booked in florida because uh, we're from Florida, and basically right. everything's kind of been open mm-hmm. still down here. So it's like yeah. they started doing shows again, and like, yeah. I want to say December we played our first show back. Oh, what was that like? So I went to a show. I went to a couple yeah. shows. I went to a show in November and December up here in Indianapolis, and yeah, I saw like David Ellison from Megadeth, and I saw Saving oh, Abel. Yeah. So I, I saw yeah. a couple shows and. It was really fun, but it also made me kind of like depressed because I wanted it back full time again, and it's not. Yeah, you know? it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it will be though with the vaccines. Yeah. But yeah, when we played, it was like it was slammed too. Like you could tell everybody was like, "Oh, thank you!" Like something's happening. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it was like crazy. Like people were like aching for it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yo, oh, yeah, it's like I almost shed. I think I did shed a tear when that first band started playing live at that first show. I was like, yeah, oh my like, Holy god, shit, is this shit? Yeah, I'm like, like I, life's gonna be normal. Right, man. I'm it's like, crazy. oh, that the, just the energy coming through the amps and the the monitors and everything. I'm just like, oh, it feels so good. I didn't want it yeah. to end, you know. It's real. Oh, yeah. it felt You're so like, good. Yeah, but yeah, Florida has been pretty open because I know I'm a wrestling fan, and AEW down in Jacksonville has been yeah. like, having fans and all that stuff. They've again. been going hard the whole time. <laughs> yeah, bro. they never stop. Right? Yeah, it was like we don't give a shit. Like, right? We're just doing whatever we want to do. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, shoot. Well, shoot, man. Hopefully, we see you up in Indianapolis at some point this year or next year, man. Kyle, thank you so much for taking time today. The new songs, Ups and Downs and Sheep, out now. New music coming throughout 2021 and hopefully some tour dates, man. Thanks again. I I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man. All right. Thanks, bro. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye. Man, I appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you down the road, man.